So we all know that when we use a Google service, we have a certain sacrifice that we must make. We get a service in return for all of our data. And Google wants to know as much about us as possible so that they can serve us ads and also sell that data to other companies. It's how they make their money. Now, some of us have just come to terms with that exchange, and that's fine. But if you are interested in protecting your privacy, protecting your data, there are certain steps that you can take. And obviously that means finding alternatives to Google services. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the biggest one you can do. Now, I think the service that most of us use the most when it comes to Google is Google Search. And finding an alternative to that is actually fairly easy because there's a ton of them out there. But if you wanna self-host your own, one of the options that you can use is a application called Cirques. Now, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Basically, what Cirques allows you to do is host your own search engine. And this enables you to not only control where your data goes, it also allows you to control how the search engine works, where it gets its data from, how it displays the data, and so much more. So today, I'm gonna to take you through installing Cirques and actually showing you how Cirques works. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and take a look at a VM here where we're going to be installing Cirques. Now, when I say installing Cirques, we're going to have to go through a meandering route to get there because I've chosen a different way than normal, but we'll talk about that as we go along. So no matter how you're gonna do this, we're gonna, you're going to wanna to install Docker and Docker Compose. And how you do that is going to be dependent on what distribution you're on. I'm on OpenSUSE, so I'm gonna be using Zipper to install it. If you're on Arch, you'll also will just use your package manager to, to install it. If you're on something that is more of a static release distribution, like Ubuntu or Debian, or Linux Mint or something like that, you'll wanna build Docker and Docker Compose from source. Now, I have instructions on installing Docker Compose and Docker from source right here in my documentation. I'll link to this in the video description below and uh, I'll give cre uh, credit where credit is due. This comes directly from Drew. He got all this stuff for Debian and has written it down elsewhere as well. So if you're on one of those types of distros, you'll want to follow those instructions. If you're on a more rolling release type distro, you'll want to just install it from your package manager. So we'll do sudo, uh, in my case, zipper, uh, in, and then docker, and docker-compose, like so. It'll ask you for your password, and then we'll sit here, wait for zipper to do its thing, and then hit yes, and there we go. And it shouldn't take too long at all. Now, once that's done, there's a couple other things that you have to do in order for this to work. So we'll need to make sure that the Docker service is up and running and that the Docker group is available to you as your user. So once this is done, we'll do those two things. So I'll clear this and we'll do sudo system CTL. You got to actually spell this right, Matt, like so. And then enable dash dash now and then just Docker, like so. You'll have a little bit of output there, and you'll know that it's done if you get output. If you don't get any output, or if it says error, then you'll have to do it again. And the next thing we'll wanna do is do sudo uh, user mod, like so, dash A, capital G, and then the name of the group, which is, in this case is Docker, and then your username, in my case, is going to be Matt. We'll hit enter. If you did it right, there should be no output. So basically what that does is it adds your user to the Docker group. Now, you may or may not have to restart your system at this point. I'm going to hope that I don't have to. I don't think that I do, but sometimes in order for things to actually be where they need to be, you have to restart your system. Now, you can also probably get around that by making sure that the service is actually enabled. So you do, do sudo, again, make sure you're spelling things right, system, CDL, status, and then Docker. And we can actually see that Docker is in fact active and running. So we can quit out of that. So let's go ahead and clear this. So once you have Docker and Docker Compose installed, the next thing we're going to do is going to be somewhat controversial. And that is we're going to install Portainer. Now you do not need to do it this way. I prefer to do it this way simply because I know that eventually I'm going to run other Docker containers and Portainer will allow me to manage all of my Docker containers in a GUI. Now, 
When it comes to Docker, I do prefer to use a GUI, so going this direction makes things easier for me. But if you don't want to do it this way, you can do it other ways as well. You can just use Docker Compose, so you'll need a Docker Compose, Compose YAML file for Cirques, or you can just use Docker itself. Either way is fine. Both of them entail actually using the terminal or a, a YAML file to do this. I will try to find instructions on how to do that and leave those in the video description below, but it's not actually that hard. It's going to be somewhat similar to what we're going to be doing other than we'll be in a GUI in order to do it. So again, it's controversial simply because you don't have to do this. It's an extra step, but I feel that it's better, the best way to do it. So we're going to install Portainer now. The best way to do that is with these instructions here. I will again link to my instructions on how to do this in the video description below. That way you can just copy and paste these commands instead of having to type them. So we're going to do this here, and I do believe I'm going to need sudo in order to do it. So we will grab that and do enter. So if you did it right, you'll just get the name of the volume. So basically this is just creating the storage location for Portainer. And then we're going to want to do sudo again, and then we're going to want to copy this. And all we'll have to do is that, hit enter. Now it's not going to be able to find the pertainer right away, it will download it and it will start it. That's all there is to it. It's really quite simple. Once you get Docker Compose and Docker installed, you run those two commands here for pertainer, that's all you gotta do. Now the next thing, in order to actually go to pertainer, we're gonna clear this and we're going to run IP and A. We need to find out what our internal IP address is. So. This is going to depend on how you're connected to the internet. So if you're connected via Wi-Fi, it's your network device will probably start with a W. If you're connected via a ethernet cable, it'll probably start with an E. And it's usually number two on the list. Usually, not always, but usually number two on the list. In my case, it is number two on the list and I'm connected via ethernet. It's this one here. So we need this particular IP address right here. So we're gonna copy and paste that. And then we're gonna open up a tab and we're gonna paste that IP address and we're going to use a colon and you go to 9443. This is basically the port that Portainer is running on. Now, here's where you might experience a problem. So if I hit enter, it's gonna come up like this error here. Basically what this says is it, me it needs HTTPS. And that's weird because Portainer's not actually running in HTTPS, but the way Firefox works at least, you need to put HTTPS in there for Portainer to work. On Vivaldi, you don't need to. So depending on what browser you're using, this may come up for you. So if it does come up, just do HTTP colon, oops, excuse me, HTTPS colon backslash backslash enter. It's going to tell you a warning. You're going to an insecure site, which we are. We'll hit advanced and we'll hit accept the risk and continue. And here we are in Portainer. That's as easy as it needs to be. So we're gonna to need to create ourselves an account. You can keep it as admin or if you wanna change it to a name, you can do so. And I'm just going to use a very simple password. Doesn't really matter. We'll just do very, very simple. I believe it'll actually, oh, it has to be about 12 characters long. Whoop de freaking do. So you can't use my super duper secure password. We'll let Firefox generate one for us. There you go. Uh, I have no clue what that is, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and click Create User, and we'll uh, update that way that we actually save that password so we don't lose the damn thing. All right, now we're in Portainer, and now we can go ahead and install Cirque. So we can actually close the terminal here because we won't need it, and we can make this full screen. So now let's go ahead and do the next thing with Portainer we have to do before we jump into this. We need to go to Local down here at the bottom, if I can remember where this is this is at, and then uh, environments is right here, this is local, and we want to click on this, and we want to change the pub public IP to this number here. So copy this, control C, and go here. Basically what this will allow you to do is just click on a port number of any of the Docker containers that you choose to run, and you won't have to worry about actually entering the IP address. It will just tack the port number to this IP address. So we'll go ahead and update environment, and then we're going to go back home here. All right, so we'll click on this, and basically you, it, what Portainer does is it manages other Docker containers. And right now the only Docker container we have running is Portainer itself. But we need Cirques. So once you're at this point here, it's actually time to install Cirques itself. And the best way to do that is go ahead and hit add container up here at the top, type in Cirques as the name, 
Now, just to know that I've been calling this Cirx the entire time. The actual name of this is Cirx NG. It's the most recent version, the most re recent and up-to-date fork of Cirx. There are others that you could use. I just prefer this one here, but I just call it Cirx for uh, reasons. It's just easier, right? So the next thing we'll want to do is, so in the image slot, we'll want to put the image name. So basically we're just copy this and Basically, this just tells it where on Docker Hub, which is like an app store for Docker, where it's going to get it from. So in this case, it's search ng slash search ng, and that's it there. Now, the next thing we we'll want to do, I've done a little bit of rearranging here. The next thing we we'll want to do is create some ports. So the best way to do that is I believe we're going to need to create just one port. In this case, we're, we'll do this. We'll do 8091, so 8091 and 8080, like so. Oops, I actually got to type that right, 8080. Now, if you are not running any other Docker containers, you'll probably be able to just use these ports. But if you can't use these ports, what you'll want to do is change this number here to something different. So, Portainer will actually tell you if you can't use the ports you're, try to, you're trying to use. What that usually means is that you have another Docker container that's already using that port. Just change the host port and you should be ready to go. The, the container port can stay the same. It doesn't really matter because two containers can use the same container port. That's internal to the container, whereas the host needs to have a explicitly unique port for it to work. So if you're already using the port, you'll need to change that number. But I'm not, I don't have any other cont containers running on this machine, so we'll just use what I have written here. So the next thing we want to do is go on here to the advanced container settings, hit volumes. We're going to want to create one volume and that's, and we're going to want to change this here to bind. And we're going to want to change this to slash ETC slash S E A R X S E A R X N G. And then we're going to want to enter the path to the host. Now, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to open, actually open up our terminal here again. We've got to create a directory and we're going to do this in SRV. So we're going to do CD, CD into slash SRV. Let me zoom in here so I can do this. So you guys can actually see this and we're going to do sudo make directory S E A R X like so. And we'll ask for a password and I believe, and then we'll, we can do an LS and we can see that that directory that we created is right there and we're going to want to go into that directory like so and just print that directory out and copy that so control shift c go back here and control v now let's explain what this is doing this is again creating a volume for search now if you remember back when we we started portainer we created a portainer underscore data volume this is basically doing the same thing just in a gui so we're taking the expected path in the container itself, and we're mapping it, basically symlinking it to the location where we actually want the data to be stored on our machine. In this case, it's slash SRV slash circs. That's all there is to it, right? Okay, so we can then close our terminal. We shouldn't need that again. And we're going to need to then add a couple environment variables. So we click on ENV. Uh, we need two different environment variables. So we're going to go ahead and click that twice. The first environment variable is base URL, B-A-S-E underscore URL. So once you have the name in, then you're going to want to hit the value. Now, this is where it's going to be different depending on how you're going to do this. If you're wanting to expose this to the internet, you're going to need to put the base URL. So if you're going to do, say, circs.matthewweber.xyz. You could do that. You'd have to then use something like Cloudflare or your your domain registrar's DNS service to map your IP address to that particular URL and all that stuff. Now, I am not going to cover that because that's entirely too complicated for this video. So if you want a video like that, I will link to it in the video description. It will show you how to set up Nginx and how to port forward and all of that stuff. Personally, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to type in HTTP. I believe this is going to work. We may have to change it later. Colon black says black slash and then our IP address, which is still right up here, handy dandily. We'll copy that, control C and control V. And then we're going to leave that right where it's at. The next one we need to do is do instance names. We'll just do ins 
I-N-S-T-A-N-C-E underscore name. And you can name this whatever you want. We're just going to type this as Cirques, like so. And then the next thing we'll want to do is change the restart policy here to unless stopped. And then we should be able to just go ahead and hit deploy container. That's all there, there sh that's all there should be to it. We'll take a couple of minutes in order for, for that to, to go. And if it successfully did it, it'll say success up there at the top. And then let me go ahead and minimize that and maximize this. We should be able to click on this link right here. Ha <laughs> ha, we did it. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. There you go. We've done it. We've installed our very own search, search engine. We can search for whatever we want. So we'll just type in the Linux cast like so and uh, hit enter. And there we go. We did a search on our very own search engine. That's all there is to it. Cool, huh? So now we have our own search engine. What's it all about? Well, the whole idea here is twofold. First, you're in control of the data. All the data that ever goes into this thing is stored on my machine behind my firewalls in con control of all my security s setups. So I'm 100% responsible for this instance and keeping it secure. And I'm not selling my own data to anyone. It's mine. You can't have it. So there, that's the first part. The second one is actually going to be preferences. The preferences of CIRCs are huge and we're not going to have time to go through all of them. So I highly recommend once you do get it set up, coming here and actually perusing through all this stuff because you can easily make this thing as complicated and well configured as you want or you can just use defaults. I usually just use the defaults, but there are a ton of different things that you can do in order to actually get this thing to work. So you can do things like change the theme. So if you want the dark mode to always be there, you can do that, whatever, or you can do the auto. So you can change how it looks. You can change the privacy of it method. So you can actually use HTTPS or whatever, the image proxy, all that stuff. And here's the big one. When you hit engines, you can go down here and choose where Cirques is getting its data from. So by default, it's getting things from, get it, getting it from Brave and DuckDuckGo and Google, and you can get it from Quant and all these search things. But there's a ton of different sources for your websites, your translation sites, your Wikimedia sites, things like images and all sorts of stuff, all different sources for data. And not all of them are on by default, just the main ones are here. The more you enable the slower search will be just keep that in mind but you can also go through and just you know if you want to get some from bing just click that on and then all of a sudden your results will have results from bing from brave from duckduckgo and google along with all the others that are here enabled so this gives you minute control over where your search results come from this can lead to a mess and to some duplications uh, it doesn't actually give you duplicate sites. It does a good job of filtering those things out, but it does also kind of mix and match things. So sometimes your results can be a little wonky, but you kind of have to hone those things in so that you can create your own index of search results. So this doesn't actually pull from its own. It pulls from others, but it obfuscates all of your data. You're just basically creating a front end for them all, right? And by combining different search engines, you can have access to other and more diverse results section of things that you search for. So you can go back up here and you can do the same thing for images. You can do the same thing for videos and for news and for maps and for music and science and files and social media and all sorts of stuff. You can choose where your data is coming from or where your search results are going to be displayed from. And that's awesome. That is the power of CERCs. It allows you to completely customize your search engine to the point where your results are literally unique to you. Now, is it perfect? No. Are the results better than Google? Sometimes. Are they sometimes worse than Google? Also sometimes. Google, got to remember, they're just pulling from one source, their own index, whereas you're pulling from all sorts of them, and you are probably going to suffer for that sometimes simply because other search engines aren't as good as Google. Also, you are having to deal with having it kind of search through these phrases and stuff like that. So sometimes search isn't as good, and you do have to use Google instead. I probably... 5% of the time I find myself just going to Google. Every other time I just use Cirques. So if I go back here 
Again, I can just do another search, search for just a guy Linux, like so, and it will actually show me everything about Drew's channel and his website and his and his GitLab and GitHub and whatever. So it's a search engine. There's not anything special about the layout here. It looks like Google used to before they cluttered it with all sorts of nonsense. You won't ever see an advertisement on here, which is awesome. You can then just, you know, click on a link or whatever and do go about your, di your day. That's all there is to it. So that's Cirques. Now I know I spent the vast majority of this video actually just installing the damn thing. But there's not much more to it. It's just a self-hosted search engine. And it allows you to search for things like images. So if I go to images here, now it will show you some things. Now, again, because you're pulling from multiple sources, you're going to have various results. I will say that the image search is by far the least good out of the box. You really do have to hone that in order for that to work well. What I did is just turned all of them off except for Google Images. It's just It just worked better that way. Because when you search for something with images and, and you have all of the sources enabled, it doesn't always give you the best results. So you have random things like guys sitting your guys steal roller shutter during. I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky that no porn came up here. <laughs> Because it have had that happen before when I wasn't searching for anything related to porn. It just happened, right? So, again, going into the settings and fine-tuning where the data is coming from will help these results be better for you. And that's the charm of Cirques. So, there you go. So, that's the end of this video. Now, I know that the installation probably was a little bumpy there. Simply because it's been a long time since I've done a how-to video. I'm a little rusty. We'll get better at it. So if you have questions on any of this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'll try to help you. I will also link to all of my written documentation for installing Docker, for installing Portainer, for installing Cirques. All those will be linked in the video description below, below the referenced little tag. So it'll be towards the bottom of the description. Just scroll down there. I'll have links to all that stuff. I'll also link to videos on how to expose something like Cirques to the internet using Cloudflare. And I will also leave timestamps here. So if you want to jump around to different spots, you can. So there you go. If you have thoughts on this, comments in the comment section below. If you can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. So if you want to support me on Patreon or on YouTube or Kofi, those links will be in the video description. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop at delinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise and all the proceeds for that merch goes directly to me to help make more content for you guys. So thank you so very much if you've done that. If you haven't, head on over there, check it out, get yourself a t-shirt. It's awesome. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good week.